Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. If you're buying lenses from the 1950s, 1960s, really all the way up to the mid 1970s, you're going to come across lenses uh, that are multi coated and lenses that are non multi coated. It doesn't matter if you're buying Leica, Nikon, Canon, Hasselblad, um, Bronica. In the mid 1970s, the manufacturers did start to multi coat their lenses. Now, there are some people out there that'll tell you that you should always buy multi coated lenses, never buy single coated lenses. But how different, are, how different are they? Is it really worth paying the extra for the multi coating? Well, what I'm going to do in this video is to make a direct comparison between a multi coated lens made by Hasselblad and a non multi coated lens made by Hasselblad just to see what difference that multi coating does make in the real world. Now, whilst I'm focusing predominantly on Hasselblad, there's no reason to suggest that the improvement or otherwise that I that I see um, won't apply equally to other manufacturers too. So whether it be Nikon, Leica, Canon, Pentax, Olympus. What I am gonna do um, is to put some links in the description box below, which will allow you to download some larger files to actually make the direct comparisons yourself. Obviously looking at this now, the pictures you're going to see aren't going to be particularly high resolution, so any differences that do exist are going to be quite hard to spot. So if, if, if you want to critically analyse the results yourself, please do download the files from the, um, from the box below. Okay, so firstly, let's just talk about the methodology. To make this as accurate as possible, um, I used two Hasselblad 80mm 2.8 planar lenses, the, the older metal C-type lenses. One was T-star coated, one wasn't T-star coated. I mounted each lens onto a Hasselblad X1D digital camera in turn. Uh, the whole, the whole outfit was mounted onto a, onto a tripod. The two exposures with each, with each lens were taken side by side. Uh, same exposure, same aperture, uh, same light, same time. So I was as consistent as possible to make sure that the, the only thing that changed between comparison shot A and B was the, was the lens itself. So we could be as sure as possible that the improvements or otherwise that we, we saw were down to the T-star coating. I've done this before, back in the, um, in the pre-digital days. So I knew what to expect, but this time it was a little bit different because this time our test camera was a Hasselblad X1D Mark II. So we were using a very high quality uh, medium format sensor. Um, and I expected that to, to show up the differences between the, the multi-coating and the non-multi-coating, the, the T-Star and the non-T-Star um, lenses, um, maybe, maybe more clearly. But as you'll see as I scroll through these photographs, the results are very, very similar indeed. The only, uh, the only set of photographs where you will see a difference is the photograph of the, uh, the sun coming through the, uh, the branches. Ironically with this one, I actually prefer the, the non-multi-coated the non lens. Um, but if you looked at it carefully, you can see that the multi-coated lens, the T-star lens, has held it together a lot better and there, there is more contrast and there's certainly less, um, less flaring across the whole frame. The, the, the other three sets of photographs, the colourful chairs, the, uh, the tree bark, the, the landscape, um, Really, the difference is very, very small indeed, which really is astonishing, given that the first, the first of these uh, Hasselblad planar lenses was introduced in the, in the late 1950s. What I'm going to do now, though, is just, is just scroll through some more photographs, some, some enlargements um, of, of the photographs you've just looked at, so we, so, so we can be a bit more, a bit more critical. And you, you, you will see that the, the difference is, is, is greater if you start to look very, very closely indeed. Indeed. Okay, so let's fo let's focus on the uh, the first pair, the the colourful chairs. What I've done is to um, enlarge um, the, the the roller skates, and if you if you look here, you'll see where the difference does does show itself. I mean, this this is a, this is a big big enlargement, but you'll see there's a little bit more contrast. It does appear to be a tiny bit sharper. You'll see the T-star coating does 
does make a does make a difference when 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 you look into into this sort of very very fine detail but of course the big question is in the big wide world does this make a difference and in all honesty i don't think it does if you're looking at these pictures on a on a monitor if you look at these pictures on an ipad or an iphone or even if you're looking at them on a large on a large tv screen you're not going to see any difference at all if you're having them printed will you see a difference yeah, the chances are you won't. Um, possibly very large exhibition prints, you might see a difference, but only really if you're comparing them side by side. Nobody is ever going to not buy a picture taken on a non-T-style coated Hasselblad lens because it isn't sharp, because it isn't contrasty. You know, they are fantastic lenses. And, and this exercise really has been very very interesting for me. As, as I said earlier, I thought I would see a bigger difference, particularly with, with the pictures taken on a, on a digital, uh, on a large digital sensor. But the difference just is, is hardly there. So I think in summary, if you are looking at older lenses, if you can buy the T-star coated version, if you're buying Hasselblad and you can afford to go for the T-star coated lens, go for the T-star coated multi-coated multi lens. Um, but if your budget doesn't stretch that far, you know, absolutely stick to the non the non the non multi coated lenses. They are producing fantastic results, given that these things are now um, fifty plus years old. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you have any comments, please stick them in the um, boxes below. I'll always respond when I can. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.